Yo, hell yeah. Wyatt begins in like uh, five, four, three, two, one. Yo, welcome to Wyatt. And I'm your host, Wyatt O'Brien Evans. Grrr, woof, God damn it, woof, 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 woof. Hi, I said hi. <laughs> to all my YouTubers out there, if you like what you hear and if you like what you see, just click those subscribe buttons at the bottoms of your screens. And since I know you loves me, give me some likes. And also, hey, leave me some comments because I always like to know what you're thinking. Anywho, today's Wyatt is a special treat. The show shines the spotlight on Krishan. I said Krishan. An imaginative and innovative music talent and lifestyle content creator who's going to talk about how their YouTube channel is impacting the LGBTQ plus community particularly androgynous individuals. So, hey, I say, let's, let's just do this thing right now. So, without further ado, Wyatt, I said, Wyatt welcomes Krishan, the imaginative, innovative, intriguing singer, songwriter, producer, and lifestyle content creator. And that was one hell of a mouthful, but talk at me, baby. How the hell are you? I'm good. Thank you for having me, Wyatt. I'm is, so happy to be on the show. Listen, it is so good to have you on the show. You know, we've been a friend for more than 10 years. And 10 years ago, I interviewed you for the Huffington Post. Remember that? Yes. Yeah. That, that was I, an exciting and amazing experience to have, to be in a publication. And I thank you for that so much. I still look back on that and like, oh, uh, that, that, that was amazing. Well, you were amazing. <laughs> you were amazing. <laughs> okay, so. Um, you, my friend, are focusing more on being a vlogger who creates skincare, beauty, fashion, and food content than a music talent. So what's the 411 on that? Why did you move to that direction? Well, I just had to, like, the, the music business is just hard, and it mm -hmm. takes a lot of, it is truly like a startup. Um, and a mm -hmm. small business, you have to front a lot of money and you have to be in these spaces and be a mover and shaker. But it was a little bit different 10 years ago because everything wasn't, you can still try to meet people and try to um, right. kind of get some fun, someone in the music industry to kind of like believe in you. But I feel like nowadays, the the more I kept doing it, the more like technology came about and just this new independent world. Because when I started, I think, I feel like I started on the very tail end of the old guard of independence uh, and transfer into the new guard of um what an independent artist look like and uh -huh. in that transition i feel like a lot of people wanted you want it still and now wants you to have everything everything uh -huh. um they want you to have the budget they want you to have the stylist they want you to have the, the music videos they want you to have a catalog um, so and that entails you having to have studio time, having to book producers, songwriters, if that's what you do, um, makeup artists, stylists, and then bring a package to if you want to be in a label. Mm. And if you don't want to be a label, you still have to do all those things yourself to make Anywhere. it in this industry. And, and that requires a lot of funds, a lot of money. So... That's what I was on. I was setting off trying to save up that budget for a, a musical budget to fund my 
um, projects and right. to start my own little mini company. But mm. life set me back. Um, I moved to New York City. It mm. was not easy living in the city. Um, and I was blessed to, 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 to be there and to experience everything that I was experienced and even blessed to have a privilege of moving to a city without any money. But right. it is still a struggle. You still have to feed yourself. You still have to pay rent, all of that. And mm. so just life happened. And then the worst part happened in my entire life. Uh, my mother was diagnosed with Parkinson's. No, oh, I'm so sorry. Yep. So um, we ended up, New York was hard. Mm. My mother was going through it. At the time, she was nowhere near any craziness. But we were like, right. oh, well, we want to just kind of ease, make it easier for her, make it easy for us, and just make it sure. easy for everybody. We just leave New York City because we would probably still be in New York City and stay there until the wheels fall off. I'm talking about mm. living with people on couches. We were, yeah. I was ready to do anything for the dream. But right. when your heart calls and your family calls, you have to you have to mm -hmm. kind of take that back seat. So I was never giving up because I'm not still not giving up. But it took a, I had everything had to take a back seat. So I right. was I was always making music, and then I um, came up with my project Opus One mm -hmm. in 2018. So right. that still went on and I still performed a couple of places. Um, yeah, and still tried to do the whole music thing. But in 2020, mm -hmm. I had looked up and the pandemic had happened. And I saw all of these YouTubers that I was following because I also wanted to do a hair channel back in 2017. When I was in New York, uh, I was okay. on a whole new um, black natural hair energy because it was so many beautiful beautiful people just expressing their natural hair and loving their natural hair, which was not something that was in Baltimore <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. when I was growing up. So being in mm. New York City in front of all these beautiful people expressing their naturality just inspired mm. me to go natural because I, I was relaxed. Um, and then I went natural. Then I tried to do a hair channel. Then I stopped the hair channel. It was very inconsistent because it takes a lot, especially with my type of hair. It's 4C. Mm -hmm. um, it takes a lot. Um, but in 2020, I've always watched YouTube since probably like heavily since like 2016. And then 2017, I watched a lot of natural hair videos. But in 2020, when the world went crazy, mm -hmm. I ended up just looking at all these people like, what do you do when you can't work? What do you do? And I was privileged that my housing wasn't going to be affected. My food sources wasn't going to be affected um, because I was living with family. And mm -hmm. my mother did her due diligence in her career and in her life to afford me a lot of privileges um, to not have to worry about a lot of things growing up. Even though I did have my struggles, I'm going, mm -hmm. it was a privilege. So looking at people who didn't have those privileges and like looking at our government officials who we elect just dropped the ball on so many things. Like this is a global pandemic, mm -hmm. y'all. And then so many people are unhoused and don't know where they're going to get their next meal from. But I was seeing these content creators that I've been following for about five years Mm -hmm. looking back like they're buying their homes they're buying cars and i'm like whoa like y'all actually mm -hmm. made a living and it's not like because i feel like we look at like you're either going to make no money or you're going to be like you're going to be like jackie Ina or um the big youtubers who grace forbes right but these mm -hmm. are people living living middle class have middle class incomes living comfortably you never okay. thought that was going to happen you never thought actually thought mm -hmm. that the youtube Look. was going to make careers or allow people to live comfortably it was going let to be me like, stop mm -hmm. let me 
let me stop you right there because that's the piece of the conversation I want to talk about later. And okay. I'm glad you brought that up. But I want to get into a quote. I love giving out people's quotes. You said this, and I quote, I have a unique approach to everyday life style go-tos. Follow my journey as a content creator and a vlogger who puts his life on display for the internet. So let me give you a compound question. Yeah. What compels you to open up like that? Is it simply to titillate or amuse, or is there some deeper, more substantial purpose? Well, how I was worded, it's it's to to titillate because you know this is all entertainment. Mm. But mm. everything I do is always going to be based in truth. But okay. because I've been doing this for a long time, you have to captivate your whoever you're talking about in this entertainment industry but the truth behind it is i do and i have realized it in the past year um i it was something i've always championed being androgynistic being um a beauty boy being mm -hmm. um gender bending is something that i always knew that was different and growing mm -hmm. up different and even in my music um just just wanting to empower people in that aspect but this the past i would say year and some change has really mm -hmm. opened my eyes to see that me being me is a very unique approach to society because i feel like in music you're entertaining people you have the bells and whistles to like make people put their rose colored glasses on and just mm -hmm. be entertained and love that. But in this everyday lifestyle space, it is a very different element because you are allowing someone to be or to see the different all the time. It's uh, mm -hmm. you, you are allowing people to see the other, the uniqueness every single day. And I think for uh, a lot of people, that is something that a lot of people still haven't fully wrapped their heads around. And uh -huh. um, it, it, it has not um, kind of acclimated to them in an everyday space, especially if they don't know queer folks. And okay, let I'm, me... Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah, then I'm in a space of it's heavily women focused and and black women focused so mm -hmm. you get a lot of women who and black women and um so so they should want to see other black women and relate to other black women but then it's like how do i fit in that space how do i also be a part of their everyday entertainment and everyday go-to's and how do i convince them or want them to be a part of something that they can go to someone else who is who is a cisgender woman who can wholeheartedly relate to them in every aspect and they mm -hmm. do it way better and way beautiful you know what i'm saying okay so i it, do it is, it's, so it, it is a so, um, difference okay great now this is what I want to do, because we're going to get back to that. I don't want to give away the entire game yet. Okay. So because the Wyatt audience is nosy, we are so nosy. We want to know all about your backstory. So are you ready? I'm ready. Where were you born and raised? A Baltimore, Maryland. Really? Um, yeah. Okay, uh, brothers and sisters, what's, what was your family structure? Uh, my family structure was mostly my mother and my sister. Um, my sister, Bella, who is trans now. Um, okay. So our family dynamic was a beautiful one. Um, something that most people don't get. Um, I have so much love and so much like... Okay. So much love and so much so, so much care in my life and just an mm -hmm. abundance of it. And my mother truly made our home a safe space. Um, I cannot oh. 
thank her enough for that. Like, especially seeing so many people out there who don't have that. I truly had to take mm-hmm. space to come home and be whatever I wanted to be and do whatever I wanted to do. And just thinking about it, like putting on four concerts, blasting music, and my mother just not not yelling, not fussing, only when it got late at night. But well, look, but let listen, me do that. If I were you, if I was your mama, I would have been yelling at you up and down, baby. <laughs> look, look, look. At ten o'clock, that would have been it. I, it would have been like cut. I tried, I, I tried to end the concerts around 11, 11-ish, 12, 11-ish at the most, but sometimes I'm still bumping music mm. into like 1 o'clock. But mm. <laughs> mm-hmm. I love your mama. She was a, she was a trooper, baby, because like I said, she I would have cut you off she at was. 10 o'clock. I would have cut you off. <laughs> but it got better. <laughs> it got better in my teenage years, so... Then she left okay. us all alone, and her and my aunt was out there just shopping, going mm. to the casino, just out. So I was able to go a little bit longer. <laughs> well, you know what? Look, look, Christian, speaking of your mother, you have a very interesting coming out story. Tell us yes. about that. Yes. Um, something I just recently shared on my channel, and I never shared mm. it with anybody publicly, and except for you that one time. And um, I remember seeing Sex in the City and Noah's Ark. And in Sex uh-huh. in the City, um, um, what was the saying? I can't remember the saying in Sex in the City, but in Noah's Ark, Alex was talking to the new character, Brandon, who joined them uh-huh. on the retreat and said that, um, make sure that you are living the life you are setting the foundation for the life you ultimately want to live and that Mm -hmm. just rang so true to me like i want to i want to be i want to carry myself as a person that i want to be in life and how i want people to treat me i guess in second the city's quote was find the you find someone to love that you you love and i interpreted that like um I love this person. So every time I go out, date that, there's no changing who I am. There's no switching it up. If you love me, then you love me. So those were like haunting me. So then I had like a little meeting with my girls and I'm like, I think I'm gonna come out. Like, and cause they've been pressuring mm-hmm. me like, you should come out, you should come out. And I was like, I think I'm gonna come out. So they was like, okay. So then this whole week i'm like gearing up to come out but then my mother was doing this thing the whole week this lady Mm. saw a picture of me on her desk in her office Mm. Mm -hmm. and she was like oh my daughter will be great for your son and Mm. they will make a cute couple together Mm. and she's been just taunting me this whole week about just like little bits and pieces about this like this trying to set us up on a date Mm. so i'm going out so she's like, uh, oh, yeah, before you go, um, let's finish talking about the girl and blah, blah, blah. So then she says to me, what kind of breasts do you like? Big breasts, small breasts, medium breasts? And what, what, like, kind of breasts what kind of breasts? What kind of breasts? Yes. <laughs> what kind of breasts do you like? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, <laughs> my God. So I'm like, okay. Get your confidence together. You watch these movies enough. I'm like, Ma, there's not going to be any breasts in my life because (laughs) there's not going to be any ladies in my life. Oh, God. (laughs) Ma, I like boys. Take Mm. what you want to that. I'll leave this (laughs) with you. I'm going out. I love you. Goodbye. (laughs) So so in other words, no breasts. Absolutely not. <laughs> no breasts. I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> well, but you know what? This is so funny, Krishan, because when I was in my late teens, my sister tried to fix me up with, she was working with some person and she was trying to fix me up with that person's friend or daughter, or whatever. And I looked at her and says, I want a boy. That's what I want. 
And then she looked up. She was horrified. I said, no, God damn it. I want a boy. I want a boy. And that kind of ended that right there. Okay. But uh, I want to go back to that Puffington Post interview again, because you gave me a great quote. And here it is. You said, and I quote, being my authentic self that is openly gay frees me to be more creative. It truly is an emotional and psychological drain and burden hiding who you really are. Um, it was such a vindication that I could actually be the artist I always knew I could be. I believe that I have a duty to be visible. Concealing things just won't work, end quote. And that's profound. So let's unpack that. Um, that, that reigns true today. Um, I feel like so many people are locked in and boxed in and and it's kind of crazy how you like, sometimes when you're younger, you make quotes and you don't fully understand, you know what they are, but you don't fully understand the meanings of them. And that, that, that saying is just, just heartbreakingly true even to this day. So many people live their lives in these boxes that people put for them and in these spaces that they just cannot expand. They cannot, they cannot, they feel like they can't do something because they were born a specific gender or they live in a specific area or they've Absolutely. always known this. So I can't possibly find something new and know, know that. So it it mm -hmm. it's, it's range true to me. I am able to I guess because of my personality as well, um, I am able to not succumb to these these chains and these boundaries that people right. have set or society has set for me. Like I'm able to explore what color and anything that I want to wear and how I want to look. And as far as like foods, like exploring any kind of food that I want, um, eat a banana in public. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Know, you know that, that's an that's an interesting comparison. Okay. Yeah, because the heteronormative men they don't want to eat bananas in public. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. It's just, oh. <laughs> you, you know what? You know what I should have told my sister when she was trying to trying to hook me up. You know you what I should eat bananas what in public. <laughs> no, no. Well, you, you're getting there. What I should have done is had a banana and peel it back. <laughs> and then I would say to her, I want a boy. <laughs> hey, listen, I think she would have been more horrified. <laughs> she would have looked, I want a boy. <laughs> she would have been mortified. <laughs> she would have had she would have had a heart attack right there. Yes. Your family would never stop talking about it. Let me ask you this. Let's talk your, your music. A squash, just a little bit. It's my understanding, man, that when you were eight years old, you sang Disney songs around the house and you put on shows for family members. Is that true? Yes. Yep, it is very true. Um, if I had an audience, I would try to entertain the audience. And I love Disney. And I still love those Disney movies and those Disney songs. Like They were truly my foundation of why I wanted to be an entertainer. Okay. <laughs> okay. So let's fast forward. You've released two music projects. One is titled Sound Approved, and the other one is it Opus I or Opus One? Opus One. Thank you. Opus One. Now, you described the latter, Opus One, as a labor of love, growth, and forgiveness. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, yes, because at the time... It was when I was going through the roughest time of my life. No, um, man. Sorry. Being in New York, um, struggling for the first time, not knowing a lot about how to maneuver life, let alone life in a city, let alone life in a city like New York. And my mother was going through the worst financial time in her life as well. So man. I could not lean on her like I wanted to. Um, like I had been and that I always thought I could. 
So I had to, I had to, to ask and rely on other people and just finding out that other people just wasn't going to be like your mom and they they were not going to be and even they're not going to be there like you thought you were like because you know you make these when you're younger you think certain people are going to always be there for you and I just felt like they weren't and um it was a, it was some friends and it was some family members too that were, it would that broke my heart at the time so oh, I had to uh, so I pulled my heart out and I and I didn't want to harbor the anger and I wanted to forgive people just so I could move on and, and just get my frustrations out in my music. Um, that was the mm-hmm. forgiveness part. And then I was writing about a, a breakup, a situation that I've been through and oh, yeah. the revelations that I, I that came from that and the growth that came from that. Um, loving myself and loving what I wanted to be and and being proud of myself for not staying in bad situations and and coming to a realization because sometimes sometimes a person it doesn't have to cheat on you sometimes a person doesn't have to be mean to you and to know that that's not a good situation um I was right. dealing with a lot of ghosting a lot of like a lot of like <laughs> not being communicative um oh, not i hate that I hate yeah that. a lot of those things which is is a is a bad situation um those things cannot move you forward in a relationship and you don't realize because you are constantly thinking like well this he's not cheating he's not being mean to me he's not being abusive to me it's not manipulative but he has his own shit with him and he need to get it together and it's pouring into me. <laughs> you are, uh, let me take a tasty cake break on, on um, the question that I asked you, because what I want to say is that communication is effective, open and honest communication in a relationship is so important because last week I had Dr. Jonathan Mathias Lassiter Mm -hmm. and Dr. Lassiter is a licensed uh, psychologist. And we talked about this whole, this whole effective communication piece, because, you know, look, if I'm dating somebody, I can't read your mind and you can't read mine. That's what I'm trying to say. Exactly. So we have to, be courageous enough to openly and honestly communicate because I'm not Karnak. I'm not a mind reader. And the lack of communication can kill a potentially good relationship. Yep. <laughs> so I totally get it. Um, moving on to your work as a vlogger, let me say, my friend, that I absolutely love what you're doing. Krishan, you're bold, audacious, you're willing to take risks. That keeps everything fresh. And you're being who you is, which is your authentic, you're being who you is, which is your authentic self. And that's priceless. So let's talk about that. Um, I appreciate that. And that is, it's always so weird when people say that. And I never thought it would be weird, but and for some reason it's weird because it's like I'm me, like I'm like this is just me. Like I'm not I, I don't know I don't know how to feel about it. Um and because especially um gaining subscribers and gaining an audience, you can talk to people and you can to have those that communication with folks and hear uh-huh. like talking to people in, in the comment section and 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 people in DMs saying like, oh, thank you for living your truth, and um, uh-huh. you live authentically, you, and that also aids into like, oh wow, I am different. Like, <laughs> uh-huh. I am so different than the norm and and what society says someone should or shouldn't be. Um, and to get those things like that is just. 
I mean, I'm grateful and I'm thankful for that. And that's always what I wanted to do, um, especially with my music. And I guess in this different space, I never thought of it in the this YouTube space that I'm in. And in the social media spaces I, I'm in as well. Um, I thought it was just gonna be on the artist music side because I got that and, and, and I understood that based on me having love for Beyonce and feeling like Beyonce has changed and inspired me in so many ways. Um, just never thought that I would do it in a, in a social media space. And, and Krishan, isn't it nice to be unique and not be like a cookie cutter version of something? It, you know? it has its bad and its good. Um, it has its good as far as you get to be free, you get to be whoever you want to be and not be not have boundaries for yourself. And you get to show up a little differently than everybody else and not having to be trying to be someone else because in actuality you'll never be someone else so True. you'll forever be you trying to be someone else never matching up to that and for a lot of people it causes so many psychological emotional problems mm -hmm. and on the bad side you're unique so you stand out you're different um you're not going with the tide which means you are a piece of water left over here alone by yourself <laughs> so those things can be lonely and especially in the social media space um like i said to you earlier um um i'm and, and i express this on my channel all the time because i try to be as transparent and to to document the journey so somebody mm -hmm. else can be prepared or have just just someone else that, that can relate to them about the journey of growing very slowly. You just see a lot of these people who grow fast um, on social mm -hmm. media. And it could be a, a plethora of every anything. Uh, they're funny. They, they entertain better. Um, but I feel like a lot of people, you like the way they look. Um, mm -hmm. But like I said to you earlier about being in the space, like this is heavily into men um into women and not that not saying that men are not in the lifestyle space because they are but i am so far removed from that um mm -hmm. the, the heteronormative thing that i'm going to get placed in the um everyday lifestyle with women because it's not enough mm -hmm. of us to to have a have a a, a space that we can be like oh we're going to go into that space mm. um and women okay. created the lifestyle space even before men even took it over so they kind of hold that power that key to that um but because i don't um I'm, the average typical guy is not going to relate a lot to my channel um women will so i have to have that audience but like i said they they might be hesitant or will not sure. watch my channel because they can't relate to me and so be it because especially when it comes to black women um they have every right and and should have that space because we, especially being queer um and lgbt we want our spaces so i definitely champion um black women having their own spaces and wanting people who they can relate to and look at and look up to um and i'm just i feel like i'm just a bonus that is going to take a little longer to want to to be a part of this movement, <laughs> like like I told well, you before. Exactly. What we're going to do now is show some of your content. So okay. let's show it right now. Signature colors, but with a twist. I have experimented, did some things. Makeup has evolved over here. So we. And if you've been watching my channel, follow my
top that I've been looking for. I've seen you inside my dreams. This will clump the hell out your eyelashes. And I just like to follow like the natural lift. I'd cross the ocean for you. It's everything brown. Look at that. Peep out like that. Oh. So, welcome back to my channel. I am Krishan. If you're new, if you're a returning subscriber, hi y'all. In today's video, we are just like that. How cute is that? And then I paired them with these loafers that I got from me. Listen, I love the content. Your subscriber base, my friend, is growing, which is important. What I want to ask you about now, you touched on making money through your YouTube channel. Let's talk a little bit about that. Okay. As of right now, I am not making any money. <laughs> I am nowhere near the threshold to monetization. Um, okay. I got a long way to go. Um, Takes a while. But Yes, but like I was saying earlier, um, it inspired me to have um, to to do this as a career and to make money and possibly fund my music career as well. Right. Um, because you, I looked up during the pandemic, and there's so many of my favorite content creators able to buy their first home, buying their first first cars, and it was. It wasn't like you you didn't have to be the multimillionaire to do it. You didn't have to be these right. big creators with millions of followers to do it. You were living comfortably and you were living it through social media. And I don't think a lot of people expected that. That's why people like that social media thing isn't going to pan out for you. Um, you got to have a backup plan. Well, to be honest, you have to have a backup plan with everything because Amen. the jobs that they have have shouted to the mountaintop or have been um, stable are were never really stable. People were in companies for 20, 30 years getting fired from them and never knew know where their next move was going to. So the stability is relative. Mm -hmm. And the whole social media thing, people deter a lot of people from it and like, oh, you, the lucky ones are the ones with millions of followers and millions of dollars. But a lot of these, a lot of people, YouTube, I read that YouTube was one of the leading markets for creating jobs. It is. For, I believe that too. New, for this new way, this new regime, this new, um, world we live in so mm -hmm. i'm like and i and i saw it and i saw that and i'm like so i have to be a part of it and how do i do it and it took me like i said i was going to do the hair channel um right. but i was only doing the hair channel just i was never going to do that like full on that was only to get some nice hair products and maybe a little cute sponsorship but nothing like it is now like people are literally building companies from it um mm -hmm. and doing a, an amazing things and this could be an avenue to fund my music endeavors and but the yeah. thing that the thing about it is i love it i've been getting paid from this for I've been doing this for three years, not being paid. And I had to look at myself like I do want to be monetized and I do want to um 
and I do want to make a living from this, but this is also an outlet for me. When the week that my mother died, the thing that got me like clear headed is editing the old videos that I needed to edit and needed to go. Get Absolutely. Out. I was dealing with um, a lot of things in January. My mother broke her arm. Yeah. And for uh, someone with Parkinson's and who was 60 plus years old, breaking that right. arm, I was going through the motions, but YouTube, like my music, has been an uh, uh, outlet for me to mm -hmm. express myself, to take my mind over things, and just to be an outlet of to de-stress. So I, I, I appreciate it for that. And that's probably why I did it so long. Cause I don't like, if I don't like doing something and I have a problem with that, I stop doing it. <laughs> Absolutely. And let me ask you this question. What do you believe has been the impact of your channel, particularly on individuals that are androgynous? Um, I think I have had a good impact. I have a, so many people like, um you lived in your truth thank you um mm -hmm. and i thank you for being you and i'm going to continue to be me um and inspire other people to make channels um because it it doesn't have to be a, a big deal you can just turn on the camera and be you um it's not a lot of overhead it's not a mm -hmm. lot of a lot of hoopla and bells and whistles. If you wanted to be that, then that's your priority. But if you just want to get wake up and still have the crust in your eyes, you can do that too. <laughs> Sometimes my channel is that. Like I give you full glam, but I am waking up and I'm cooking in a bonnet. Um, I'm still dry faced um, and still talking about my day and what I didn't like yesterday and being just raw and it can also be a document a documentary of your life and mm -hmm. where you are in the moment because i was looking back on a lot of things um because i'm trying to assess my chat i was trying to assess my channel and see what's working mm -hmm. and what's not working and just right. looking That's back important. on this diary of my life and this this visual diary of my life and like wow like i had these memories and i have this little clip of my mother and one of my um youtube videos with my birthday that i just felt like it is so special to me that is out there and and yeah and just hopefully inspiring yeah. other people to live in that truth and be beauty boys and not be afraid and i'm connected with um quite a few audrey androgynistic people as well on this journey and making so many amazing friends um yeah and possibly future friends and collaborators well you know what because we are friends i'm not going to ever call you crusty dusty <laughs> now let me ask you this because we're friends you should am i looking <laughs> crusty i am no looking i'm not you to say I, that. I ain't doing it i ain't doing it but what i'm going to ask you for right now is all of your social media how can we contact and connect with you oh it is i am krishan on every platform i you got to spell it i am krishan c-r-i-s-e-a-n on all platforms okay. i am krishan at i am krishan Okay, so that's YouTube, everything. Yep, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram. I was on Thriller, Triller. I don't even know it yet because I haven't been on there. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to Twitter, what? I am Krishan. Okay. Listen, my friend, Krishan, thank you for stopping by Wyatt. It is so good to reconnect with you. You are just absolutely absolutely amazing oh thank you Wyatt. so were you <laughs> <laughs> listen i know <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much thank you thank you for having me my pleasure yeah so y'all there you have it you can find the official wyatt podcast page at wyattevans.com the go-to a destination for LGBTQ plus news, features, commentary, and entertainment. WyattEvans.com is visited by more than 
100 countries on the regular. All I can say to that is, hey, baby. And at WyattEvans.com, you'll find my smoking hot. H-A-W-T hot. Nothing can tear us apart series of novels. And as you just saw on the top, the newest installment is called Shattered. I said Shattered. And y'all, Shattered is full of, of, of action, danger, intrigue, sexually charged situations, passion, and all of the wonderful elements that you're used to in the Nothing Can Tears Apart series of novels. So get your new copy of Shattered. Now, you can follow me, your host, Wyatt O'Brien Evans, all across social media, and poof! Is right there for you to peruse, like TikTok and Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. And if you have any comments or whatever, you can hit me up at quietonair at gmail.com. So until next time, y'all, woof, goddammit, woof, 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 woof. I said woof.